All right, guys, we got a lock here from Aaron. He's been working for Blair's locksmithing for the last couple of years, and he says he put this together. He sent it in this U.S. lock box, and it says on here this is a KW1 or a quick set keyway, but this is the first part, I guess, of the psychological warfare. It's really not. This is uh, kind of a neat keyway, quite honestly. Uh, down at the bottom, you got double warding there, so might be a little difficult to use bottom of the keyway. I might be able to get it in there, but it's not ideal. So I might be forced to use top of the keyway, and I'm going to have to find a pick that'll get down inside of there. Anyway, great job so far, Aaron. Let's see what you got inside of this thing. Let me get it clamped up. Let's take a crack at it. All right, guys, this is my second try on this guy. Still got the sealed key for gutting only. Still sealed. Haven't had to dig into that. I got three or four more tries before it comes to that. I, I do have to use top of the keyway. So the way this warding is, it kind of robs me of being able to use this space with my tensioner down here. It's completely blocked out by that warding. So I've got to use top of the keyway. I've also got to use this pick. This is the offset hybrid by Sparrows. It's the only pick I have that rides on this warding, which is the only access. And even this pick with such little rise on it might be too much because I felt on a previous, there are six pins. It feels like pin three and four are right on the bottom. So just the thickness of the shaft might be stopping me from, might be, might be oversetting three and four. And if I work for Blair's Locksmith, that's probably how I do it. I'd probably put a bunch of low pins and then the very back one, which is where I'm going right now. Got to get up and around that warding. I would make him as high cut as I could get him if I'm making a challenge lock. So I'm going to try to force him first. And then perhaps later as I work my way out, I can rake the overset pins in the middle back down. Uh, if I can't do that, then mechanically, I may not be able to pick this thing because I just can't get a deep enough hook inside of there. I got pretty good tension on this thing. That was pin one. Got a little bit of turn on the core. Go back in there feel around some more. In the previous attempt, 10 minute attempt, which total failure, I did get some minor fault sets. Nothing big like would indicate that there's like a T-pin or a spool. And there's a whole lot of crunching in here. So you got to kind of watch it on your tensioning because I believe we're looking at some serrateds. Maybe all of them. Okay, that was pin one again. He has been kind of acting like a, like a gatekeeper. He falls down frequently. I don't know why. And when he falls down, he doesn't make any noise. He's like a stealth pin. Okay, that was five. That's three. And one feels like he's good. That pin is all the way on the bottom. No counter rotation on him. That was pin two. And I think one is okay. Oh, that was a good crunch. That was pin six. Let me mess with him some more. Nope, I think he's about as good as he's going to get. Oh. I think that was overset, pin two. That's pin one. He's done that to me before on a previous attempt. He gives me like three or four clicks, but then he falls down in between. That was pin two again. That was another click on pin one. I think Aaron has learned a few things. Because I believe that back one is about as high as you're going to get. Ah, that was a slight turn. Again, I touched pin one there. I got a little bit of a fault set.
Ooh, I think I just gave it up by oversetting those guys in the middle. Yeah, pin one's back down. So let's get all three clicks out of him. One, two. Mm, let's stop there. Maybe he didn't come all the way back down. Okay, that was pin two. I think I did overset at that time. That was pin six. That was pin two. Pin one's back down. Let's get all three clicks out of him. One. Come on. Two. Give me one more. Nope. I think two's all we're going to get. All right. I did touch pin six again, and I felt a slight turn on the core. That was pin two. That was pin six yet again. Kind of crunchy. Pin one is down. Wow. All right, I think all three were all in one giant click there. Now I'm having trouble getting that pick in the, all the way in the back. Come on. I have probably overset three and four in the middle. Okay, that was pin one, and I got a slight turn on the core. I'm going to put my pick right here for a second, and I'm going to hold that, and I'm going to reset my tension wrench falling out. All right. I think everybody back there is either totally bound up or they are set. So it's got to be somebody right here in the front. No counter rotation. That was two. There's a little bitty click on him. At this point, I'm looking for counter rotation or some kind of feedback. I got a false set going, but. Feels like pin one. I'm going to try to force them a little bit. Kind of an odd angle here, but it feels like there is a little bit of counter rotation there. Got some weirdness going there. Sure is crunchy, I'll say that. talk to me here. Okay, pin one was back down. I'm trying to force the guys in the back at this point. Pin one's back down. Okay, that was pin six. I felt a, a click and a slight turn. OK, 
Okay, I do have a very good fault set going here. I'm at 935, though. That's the downside. And there we go. That is open, I think. I think the tailpiece is getting caught on the back here. So, yeah. So we got an open. All right, let's see what Aaron's got. It's almost a full 20 minutes of picking to get into this thing. Whole lot of crunching and some very low cut pins protecting some very high cut pins. I'm going to go ahead and lock it back up and let's take a look at the key. It's going to be a long video, but uh, Aaron earned his money. Let's see, I think this is a container for those brass top pieces originally, so I think the seal, I don't have to cut through all of that tape. Instead, I can just cut my thumb off. There we go. That's exact. Let me zoom this out so we can get a good look. And the focus will work a little better. That, my friends, is exactly what I expected. Some, I didn't expect three very low-cut ones, but that's what I was dealing with there. I knew there were at least two that I was oversetting. Let's see if it works. And being a locksmith, I would imagine it does. It's a little bit stiff, but I think that it does get a little caught, but I think it's just a tight core. Get that out of there. Not Mac, but doesn't matter. It's a challenge lock. Get this stuff out of here. Get this over here. Need a Phillips. And let's see what kind of magic we got in here. I'm sure this bidding is not the extent of the damage. Aaron probably has some other alien tech in here. And I would imagine serrations can play a large part of it. And maybe a drop of crazy glue holding this on. There we go. That's a good tolerance. All right, because of the way this behaved, I'm going to go ahead and try to get a shim in it. Just in case there's some weirdness up in there. Might be too tight to get a shim in it. There we go. Yeah, we're getting caught up there somewhere, but it's better than nothing. All right, we got a T-pin on six and a T-pin on one, homemade. Very nice. Come out of there. Try not to launch any pins. Let's take a look here. Oops, got to turn him around correctly. Home, got some spools and serrations. More spools and serrations. <laughs> That's like a meter long, guys. <laughs> and here's another one. <laughs> Somebody spent some time with a drill. That is a torpedo. Ah! All right, another dead battery. These things are not made for endurance. Of course, i got to get be fair. It has been 20-something minutes. All right, let's take another. Before we do that, let's get the last pin out of here. All right, that's just a little guy with one single serration, and he's a T-pin on the top inside of the core come on there are some serrations in there I, I don't know if those are intended to be I don't know if they're threaded or if that's just a remnant you know real rough uh, finishing I really can't tell I believe they are threaded but I think maybe Aaron used the wrong size thread yeah definitely so one is threaded but only towards the bottom towards the top it looks a little smooth i don't know if that's even going to come out in the video that one number two is threaded all the way down on both sides number three has some very fine threads in the very top of it but smooth in the bottom four is threaded all the way through Five is threaded all the way through, 
And six is threaded all the way through. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, there's another T-pin. So it's matched up with a T-pin in, in the pin position of uh, one in, co in the core. And a little steel spring. Number two is a very strong spring. And he came out of there just like that. So homemade chess piece. And there is a spring in there. But he does not want to come out of there. And that's because there's more than one spring in there. Got one doubled up. And he's threaded. All right. Give me other tweezers. Let's get number three out of there. Number three, very weak spring. And he's just a little serrated, a little, I don't know if that'd be a spool or a serrated, very sharp edge. And single steel spring. All right, let's go from the other side. All right, we'll start with number six. There goes the shim. All right, number six. Uh, very ASA pin-like, but this is a homemade one. Let's slide that back. There is must be a spring in there, and there he is, little steel guy. Okay, I did not see which way he came out. My apologies. Because I turned my follower. One, two. All right, so this one goes here because the pin in number five is still there. So let me turn that follower. Let me push that spring down. See if I can drop that pin out. He's not cooperating. I don't know if you can see him there, but he's just barely hanging in that chamber. He's a T-pin, and I don't know why he's not coming out. He was jammed up on the serrations, and he was caught up on the little T. Like that. Steel spring. Next one was also a steel spring, I think. Yep. And that should be it, guys. All right, everything in here, every single chamber has nice sharp threads on it. So, Aaron, it's clear that you've been watching some of these tricky locks that you guys are putting together. This is what we're looking at. Now, we're looking at, if you just look at the bidding on this key, that should be, grab this guy. That just clearly wasn't nasty enough for Aaron. He had to go ahead and serrate virtually everything to get snagged up in, this, in the threaded chamber and also in the threaded body. So everything in here was designed around that. This is the only one I'm not sure how he went in there. I'm guessing he went in like that, but it would be a 100% guess. In terms of springs, they look, these two, number one and number six are the same. These three are the same. And then this one is a doubled up spring, so. That's what we're looking at. Aaron, great job. You came very close to getting a whip by. Appreciate all the effort you put in this. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.